So once again, we are going to resume our classes, and today we are going to start on optoelectronic devices. So from the term opto, is uh, these are devices that use the principle of light emission, and particularly to either to control or switch a circuit or to activate uh, an, a given system using the, uh, the light detected or light emitted. So there are basically, there are several components under this topic, and we shall be able to discover majority of them, particularly uh, under the applications based on the characteristics. So the first one we're going to do is the light emitting diode. Light emitting diode. Whatever is normally people refer to as LED, yeah? The light emitting diode, first you have to, to know the symbol. When drawn in any form, you need to know the symbol. And for this case, because light is being emitted, we shall have arrows coming out from the PN junction. And this is, is the anode. Normally abbreviated with A, and this is the cathode. So with this, what happens is that when you want to emit light, we shall be able to forward bus the PN junction, and the light crosses the PN junction. There's a recombination effect. That recombination effect enables the energy in the electrons to be converted in, in, into light when they cross the junction. So when they, in the process of recombination, they lose energy and it comes out in the form of light. That's when they're crossing the junction. So by default, we have to forward bias this. So this is the symbol. This is a symbol. And other than this, we shall be able to, we are also required to know, to know, to draw the pictorial diagram of it. So this is the light, this is the PN junction. This is the cathode and this is the anode. So we normally have electrons move across the junction. So we can have this as electrons. So basically from this diagram, you are going to see that um, there are things, uh, there are these arrows that represent the movement of the electrons from the N terminal to the P terminal and they cross the P N junction. So the, the recombination takes place in this, at this point. Now this process for recombination is whereby the electrons are able to fit into holes. And when they fit into holes, uh, they now become at a, 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 a solid, not an ion, because we're, we're, for when the electrons are moving, they are ions. So when they fit into all those holes, they lose that energy that, that they, they use for moving. At the end of the process, we have light that's coming out. So this is the construction part of it that we have, we need, we need to know concerning this. So these are the terminals. If in the case of connection, this, these are terminals that are, taken, are, that are taken from the P and the N material. So this is the construction part of it. So we have, we have to do, we have now to understand on the construction of it. So just from the observation, we are going to see that it's made up of an N layer. It's made up of an N layer. N means it's the, neg the negative material. N layer with a P material 
with a P layer. With a P layer, actually, we normally say it can be pasted on the surface of the end layer to form a PN junction. Form a PN junction. Another thing to know that the P material is very thin so that electrons can move, the light can come out very fast. The P material is very thin to enable light escaping easily. So we're going to talk about the operation of it. The operation. So for us to be able to use this device, you must forward pass the PN junction. So that means that we're going to connect uh, the diode in this manner. So this is the diagram that you can use for operation. Or equally, you can just draw the cross-sectional diagram, whatever part to us, the construction diagram. If you draw in this man, in terms of the cross-section, you shall have this as the P, this as the N. But at, at this junction, then you have still have to show that there's form of light that is escaping. But this is the preferred diagram as people were learning to know because this is an operational component. Don't cross draw using the construction. So I recommend you to be getting used to this diagram most of the, most of the time. So when we look at this, this junction is for the bursting because the P terminal is connected to the anode and the N terminal is connected to the cathode of the supply. So, so the first statement is that when the LED the LED is light emitting diode, is forward biased. When the LED is forward biased, the electrons and holes move towards the junction. The electrons and holes move towards They move towards the junction, and when they move towards the junction, recombination place recombination take place, and recombination takes place. And recombination takes place to release energy to release energy, to release energy in the electrons, in form of light, in form of light. So that's what happens on the, so, the, so what we need to understand is that when you have this, you cannot just for advanced diode without a resistor. So sometimes, sometimes it's required that you understand that this, for for purpose of protection and operation of the circuit, we normally have a circuit that is used for, used for biasing. Like we can have an example here of a question. So the example is determine the value of the resistor used
in resistor used, determine the value of the resistor used in the circuit below. So we shall have a sort of resistor to protect the diode, then we shall have our diode here, then we shall have the ground here. So maybe this I can put this as 10 volts. And maybe this I can put this as a this is the ground and this diode may be NPN diode. Not NPN. This is an, this is an LED diode. This is supposed to be breakdown voltage as 0 0.7. 0 0.7. Millivolts. So this is the positive supply. This is the supply voltage. So when you look at this diagram, one thing I want to you understand is that when you want to convert this to determine the value of the resistor, there are some parameters we need to have. So this is the resistor. If you have this diagram in mind, then we are able to, to determine some ranges of resistance that we need to understand to use here. So whatever we have is that the meaning of this breakdown of voltage is that for the diode conduct we must overcome this minimum voltage which is 0.7 millivolts. For this case, this is just an example. Must overcome 0.7 millivolts. And this the diode is connected in series with the resistor. So we cannot proceed. So one thing we have to understand that the diode will have its minimum voltage and the maximum voltage for for the range of the operation. Eh? So, uh, assuming, uh, assuming that the minimum and maximum voltage drop across the PN junction or whatever as across the LED is 0 0.7 millivolts and 1.5 millivolts. Then you have to, you are going to have is that for, for us to get the the maximum value of the resistor, what I refer to as R max should be given by the voltage source, what I refer to as Vs, Vs the voltage source, minus uh, voltage drop at the minimum over there, minus the voltage drop over the diode current, over the diode current. So you need to understand that in, 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 even in expression, you need to have the, the, the diode current that we want to have there, so that we have the, assuming that minimum, the maximum voltage drop is this one. Let me have a, and give you a specific, and the current flow is maybe approximately 10 milliamps. So we shall have this, eh? We shall have a max resistor value being this 10 volts minus minimum voltage drop is 0 0.7 millivolts. Over the diode current we have is 10 milliamps. So when we have this, we shall have, this is 9.993. This is 9.993. This is 10, this is 0 0.007. It's 9.993 volts eh? over 10 milliamps. When you divide that, we are going to get this 0 0.9993 times 10 power 3 ohms. This is the maximum value of the resistor. So when you look at it, it's approximately a thousand kilo ohms, eh? because this is nine 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 point 
that's times 10 power 3, 0 0.999.3 ohms. It's approximately 1 kilo ohm. So for us to get the minimum value, whatever we are going to have here is to get the minimum, the maximum voltage drop so that we have with a very, very small voltage as a source. So the minimum value R minimum is supposed to be Vs minus voltage drop, which is maximum over the diode current. We shall have this as 10 minus the maximum voltage drop is 1.5 over, over what I'm referring to as 10 milliamps. So this is 1.5 millivolts. Does that mean to do some calculation? Then we're going to have this as our values for the range of resistor. So we're going to realize that there's a small difference here because here we have 2.3 and 8.85. That's the, the range. So whatever I also I'll explain to you is that uh, anytime we have this, sometimes they'll give you the minimum current and the maximum current that will flow through the diode at a times. So you only need to play with the minimum value and the maximum value. For, for us to get the maximum flow, or maximum drop or maximum current, then we subtract the minimum voltage drop. For us to get the minimum current or to the maximum voltage drop, the same thing applies to the resistors. For us to have the maximum current, we should apply the maximum current, max, the maximum resistor. For us to have the maximum current, we should apply the minimum resistor. And for us to have minimum current, we should apply the maximum resistor. So we play with around those figures. So we're going to do the second dag, the second device in the application of optoelectronic devices. So just, I just remember something that we need to know about. What, what, when it comes to the application first, we work on applications. So we, we need to get some of the applications of the LED. Where can we find these devices used in any form? Then we have to talk about the image sensing applications. Some of the applications, number one, is the image sensing. Image sensing is whatever we used to. We now used to to detect the the form of 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 shadows and those. That's what we talk for image sensing. We also talk of the burglar system, burglar alarm systems. We all, we all see alarms everywhere, and when that time they come, actually they're actuated. We have the 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 LED coming on to indicate the position of the place where the the interference of the card. Another thing we talked of, we also used, you see them as indicators, eh? as indicators, even in our radios or TVs. There's a place we switch on and something coming on in terms of light. The, that one they use as indicators. Eh? We also talk of the optical sensing, eh? optical switching, not sensing, optical switching. There are devices that need that light detection to come on, and in that case, they use as optical switching. There are so many, but we can only have at least five for this purpose. And we also work in streets, we see whatever we as traffic lights. Anytime you're thinking about application, imagine of the daily activities that we interact with, traffic lights in the streets. These are the only some of the things that we have in terms of the applications. So we just need to basically know a few in terms of their, where they are found as the applications. So we're going to go to the second item, which we refer to as liquid crystal displays. Liquid crystal displays. What I refer to as LCDs. Liquid crystal display. The first thing you need to know is what is a liquid crystal. 
Liquid crystal is, is a material which be, flows like a liquid, but in a room temperature. It's a material which flows like a liquid in a room temperature, but whose molecular properties are associated with, uh, with, the, with the solids. It is a material. It is a material which flows like a liquid, which flows like a liquid, but has its molecular properties associated with the solids, associated with the solids. So the molecules are ordinary, the molecules are ordinary, whatever part was ordinary, that are in the ordinary orientation of the liquid. Eh? So when somebody look at them, it may think it's a liquid, but actually they, they are they're, they're solid. They may think it's a solid because you can see the, the surfaces they lie on. But when they move, they move like a liquid. So another thing we need to do and understand is that they behave, they have the normal orientation as the liquids. Eh? The molecules have normal orientation. Orientation is the arrangement. The mol normal orientation. The molecule have a normal orientation. Have molecular orientation. But uh, the liquid crystals, eh? but the liquid crystals are oriented. Eh? Sorry, are oriented. Are oriented in a definite pattern. So we shall, we shall have a basic construction of this so that we have how it looks like. So let me have a construction. So we shall have whatever we had as the construction of the LCDs have the construction of the LCDs. When you look at this type, eh, it cons this this the construction diagram, and these LEDs. When you look at them, uh, they are of different types. So I can. Uh, we have also used watches. Watches that actually the first generation of digital watches that normally have them display in terms of the numbers. So shall, when you look at your watches, or some of the watches that used you, you used to have these kinds of segments that the, the equipment, the, the watches will display. So this is what we're going to see in, 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 in these devices. They look like this, but this is just a form of display on one of the application of the, of the liquid crystals. So this is what is sandwiched between the two glasses here. And when, when they, they eliminated or when they, they move, eh, 
but able to see the surface or to read a certain number on the surface. So this is an example of what will be displayed, but this is the construction part of it. So we need to know what is the construction part of it that is very, very critical. So we normally say it consists of a liquid crystal sandwiched. It consists of a liquid crystal sandwiched between sandwiched between two glasses two glasses which may be which two glasses which are transparent I mean two, two glass sheets eh? that are transparent in nature that are transparent in nature. So another thing is that if the two glasses are transparent, then we talk of transmissive type. If the two glasses are transparent, if the two glasses are transparent, then the type of cell, the type of cell is known as transmittive type. It's known as transmittive type. When one glass is transparent and the other one is not, when one glass is transparent and the other is one glass transparent and the other is reflective and the other is reflective mostly the bottom the bottom glass then the cell is known as reflective type. The type. Then from here we are going to have to discuss something on the types of the liquid crystals displays that we have that are used in the market. So we are going to have what I'll refer as the types of LCDs. LCD liquid crystal displays. LCD displays. Sorry. So in this case, we have got two. Number one, whatever we have a talk of that, we talk of the field effect display. Field effect display. So when we talk about the field effect display, then what about the field? Then it, it talks about the area. Field it refers to the area actually which, which is energized. Eh? Field refer to the area which is energized. We're talking about the field effect display. Then the, it is part of the area. So in this case, when the area is energized, eh? when the area is energized, the LCD absorbs the, light, the incident light, and that energized area is able to eliminate and is able to give us the result. Eh? So when we're talking about this in field effect display. Eh? In this type of display, the energized areas in this type of the energized areas absorb the incident light. 
This is the area absorb the incident light. Absorb the incident light. They absorb the incident light. And what happens when they absorb the incident light? They give a localized block visual display. Absorb the incident light and give. Eh? A localized, localized black display. Localized black display. So let us talk now, take note that um, the area that is needed is going to absorb the light. That's the key point you need to know here. So going to the scan type. The second type we have here is the dynamic dynamic scattering display. The dynamic scattering display. Then whatever what happens with this one here? In the dynamic scattering display, when the molecules are energized, the areas, the molecules become random. When the molecules are energized, they become random. And in this process, uh, they form some sort of turbulency. They become turbulent and scatter light in all directions. So in this case, the, energized, the molecules in the energized area become random when they absorb light. And uh, when they absorb light, when they become random, they are able to, to give light in all directions as required. They shall form this is a form of a display from the lighting that uh, from the light that will be emitting. So one, what happens here is that in this case, in this case, the energy, the molecules in the energized area, the molecules. In the energized areas, the energized areas, the molecules in the energized areas become turbulent, become turbulent, become turbulent, and scatter light in all directions. They become turbulent and scatter light. Scatter light in all directions. Scatter light in all in all directions. So what do we take note of this? After this, you need to know is that then the light that is scattered will only be scattered in the inner area. Then we need to note that there are, well, the only, only the energized areas will be given to give us light, not any other area. Therefore, therefore, only activated areas take a frosted glass appearance. Therefore, only activated areas, activated areas take a frosted. glass appearance. The meaning of frosted, they, tend, they, lie, they appear like lying on the surface of the glass. Then we'll talk, we'll talk about the advantages of LCDs, advantages, advantages, of LCDs, advantages. You know some of the advantages over these other ones. So number one is that the extreme power consumption, extremely low power consumption, Extremely low. They use less less power as even compared to LEDs. Another advantage we have concerning this is that the li their lifetime is about fifty thousand hours. Lifetime is about. 50,000 hours. So then 
when we have no this, then where, where do we find the applications of LCDs? And talk about the applications. Number one is the LCD monitors. We talk of our TVs are LCDs, eh? Or our computers, LCD monitors. Any other application, even our phones, cellular phone displays, cellular phone displays, cellular mainly mobiles. Another thing is to talk of the notebook computers. Number four, we can have watches and portable instruments. Watches and portable instruments. Watches and portable instruments. So we can have this as examples. We can have those examples. Then whatever we're talking about as the third device is photoconductive cell. Photoconductive cell. So we need to know, to know, to know, to know how the photoconductive cell operates. And particularly for this case, I'll have to draw the diagram and we shall have a bit of explanation and we have the characteristics. Photoconductive cell appears in this manner. So as much as it, there appears to be a resistor in between, it's not photoresistive, it's a photoconductive cell. Because it, this is a symbol of this, whatever is inside appears to be a symbol for a resistor. But this is a photoconductive, this is a symbol, that's the symbol. So when we look at this, this, this only works when there's an incident light. Now the incident light, when there's an incident light, then the, the resistance will change. And therefore, so many, it has different names, but uh, on the terms of application, we need to understand that it only operates, it only changes its characteristics when there's an incident light on the surface of it. So sometimes this cell is one referred to as um, light dependent resistors, LDR, or photoresistor. So we are going to have explanation a bit. It's also referred to as, it's also referred to as photoresistor. Photoresistor or light dependent Resistor, LDR, LDR. So how that dependent resistor, how does it then operate? Operation. When light is incident on the surface of the LDR, light dependent resistor, its resistance changes depending on the intensity, depending on the intensity Depending on intensity of the light, depending on intensity of light on its surface, of light on its surface. And from this, you are able to have come up with the type of as the characteristic of this in terms of the graph. Then we shall have this.
That's the resistance, and this is the illumination. So it appears to be. So in, look at this, and from the, this statement that we've given here is that in time there's increasing, there's illumination is increasing on the surface of the LDR. The resistance is slowly going to, to be minimum. And this one makes us use this is as even for even a switch or for street lights because it's when the light comes in the resistance drops and we're able to disconnect the relay and turn off the lights so basically this is what we need to know to know about this so the resistive changes with the intensity of the light falling on the surface so therefore current will increase therefore current will increase with the res with the intensity of light Therefore, current eh, will increase with intensity of light. So we're going to, go to have the advantage then. So we can talk of advantages of LDR. So number one is in, it's cheap eh? or inexpensive. Some of the number, number two is the, the, the operation is very simple, simple operation. Then we also talk of the applications of these. Eh? so that we know where can we find this or where do we re interact with this kind of application. So uh, number one, you can use this in turning on system. So we talk of the on or off, on or off circuits. The, whatever we need, just turn on or, or turn off. Um, but we also talk of, when we look at this, eh, we can also talk of the light measurements light measurements because of the resistance is able to reduce itself uh, as as the light moves or as the light comes on so we can measure that according to the with relevance to the resistance and lastly maybe we we'll talk about the what as uh, led we talk about what I refer to as LED circuits. LED circuits. LED is in, in, for, for actually maybe controlling the intensity of the light, LED lights. You can use that. So we're going to go to the fourth item here and talk about the photodiode. So we talk of the third item. This is the fourth. The photo diode so from this diagram from this uh, subtopic of the photodiode this is just a diode that operates when light falls on its surface so we shall have the symbol first So this is the anode, and this is the cathode. So when you look at this, light falls on the PN junction, and it's able to change the, 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 the depletion layer or to reduce the PN junction to almost zero so that electrons can able to cross to the other side or across the terminals of the supply. And also we have this, we also have the, whatever part as characteristics. Eh? So I'll be able to have this. So in this case, in this case, light is incident on the PN junction. Light is incident on the PN junction
and therefore the depletion layer across the diode is reduced is reduced to minimum or zero hence hence improving or conducting so let us take note that uh, this diode will be reverse bar so that we have a depletion layer and that will be turned on by the incident light not by the supply voltage. So in this case then, since the device is reverse biased, its characteristics will also be determined from the incident from the intensity of illumination from the intensity of the ignition from the intensity of illumination across it's junction. So we're going to sketch this so that we have a clue on what happens. So when look at this, eh? when look at this, this is current and this is illumination. And look at this, this is already reverse bus because this is a negative voltage. We are assuming that this is positive, this this positive, and this positive. So these are the zero point and we're in the third quadrant. And look at this, is that uh, this is maybe dark current. Dark current is whatever will flow prior to elimination as form of leakage current. So when the intensity of light increases, then when the intensity of light increases or lumens per meter square is the intensity of light per meter square the current will also increase and when this current also increase increase then we shall be able to have what i'm referred to as as the the current growth because of the increase in light so this is what happens when the operation of the the characteristics have been developed from the illumination point of view so from here we shall have what we have taught as applications of the photodiode. Those, there are several applications. So number one is we talk of the logic circuits. Number two, I can talk of the demodulation circuits. Number three is optical communication system. Optical communication systems. And number four, we talk of the character recognition and encoders. Eh? Character recognition. And lastly, Number five, I can talk of encoders. There are several, many others, but we only base on a few things. Other things are going to get in our uploaded notes in the website. So kindly refer to these notes for more 
for you to get to know to the depth of this. Even this, in this explanation, we are giving a bit of uh, concepts, but kindly follow us on our website and I have some notes from the website for more information. So this is, uh, this was number four. They're going to go to another item.